if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to do one of my favorite stories of Pat's. It's called My First Year. Yeah. And welcome to it. That's kind of a sop for you people who came last time. Hunting for deer has changed. No, 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 it's all different now. When I was a kid, I wanted to go hunt a deer. I just went out and hunted a deer. Nowadays, it's, it's, it's all different. You have to punch in computer forms. There's cardboard things in triplicate. It takes less paperwork to check into a hospital. <laughs> it's not so much fun anymore either. Uh. When I was a kid, if I brought home a deer, it was cause for a major celebration. Nowadays, I bring home a deer, my daughter start yelling and screaming, <laughs> Dad snuffed Bambi. <laughs> no, no, I tell him, he was lying by the side of the road. <laughs> I was racing him to the vets, when all of a sudden he expired on the front seat. So let's hold a short memorial service for him. And then we'll eat him. That's when they call me cannibal. <laughs> it was different when I was 14. There was nothing in the world I loved more than deer hunting when I was 14. I only had two minor problems. I'd never been, and I had no one to take me. <laughs> well, none of the neighbors, including Rance, had wanted to be around me when I was armed. <laughs> there were no deer right near where we lived, so I decided the only thing I could do was get on my bicycle and go off up into the mountains hunting by myself. And that's exactly what I did do. The day after I had that idea, I took my hunting rifle and I tied it to the handlebars of my bicycle and I started pumping up into the mountains on the quest of deer numero uno. Ha ha! <laughs> after several hours and just as many steep ridges, I saw off to my left, a real hunting camp. Oh my gosh. They were just like all the pictures in the outdoor magazines, you know? I mean, the, the red and black check hunting jackets, huge four wheel drive vehicles, big white wall tents, just, just, like, just like I read about and, 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 and cut pictures out about. And oh my goodness, it was a real hunting camp. When they saw me pumping up the mountain, to go hunting on a bicycle. They thought it was the funniest spectacle to ever come their way. They started hooting and hollering and carrying on and making jokes all at my expense. And that's when I said to myself, won't you be surprised when I bring home a deer before you do? And I kept bumping on up that mountain. And finally, as I crested the last steep ridge, <gasps> this nice four-point mule deer buck steps out from behind some brush and then stands there just staring at me. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm all nervous. My hands are sweaty. I'd never shot anything that big before. But somehow I managed to snap off a shot at the deer. Oh! It drops like a rock. I am amazed. It was such a difficult shot, too. My rifle is still tied to the handlebars of my bicycle. <laughs> I check the deer for bullet holes, but I don't see any, so I think maybe he's faking it. <laughs> but then I see a big chunk taken out of one of his antlers. And I realize I'd hit him so hard on the horns that I killed him. Only problem now is how to get it home so my grandma can dress it out for me. <laughs> I've noticed that other hunters take their deer home tied to a fender. <laughs> I drag the deer over to my bicycle and I lift him up and over that rear fender. <laughs> yeah. Then I see 
his head and horns are going to drag on one side, his rear feet are going to drag on the other. This is not going to work. I guess I'll just have to leave him. And, that, and that's when I think about friends of mine, you know, kids that I take bike riding every single day of the week, but they're always sitting behind me. <laughs> A straddle of the rear fender. <laughs> One leg on either side. <clears throat> ah. <clears throat> oh. Huh. I get him a seat into that rear fender, you know, a straddle of it right there, one leg on either side, seated comfortable. <laughs> and then I tie each of his front legs to the handlebars of my bicycle. <laughs> the deer's head is hanging over my left shoulder. <laughs> ah! And I start to pedal towards the brink of that ridge. It's a lot harder than you think riding a bicycle with the deer on it. <laughs> Just as my front wheels start down the steep slope, I hear this strange sound. I know what it is. It sounds kind of like a snort. Snort. <laughs> snort. The deer is blinking his eyes. <laughs> right away he panics. Ah! I can tell it's his first time on a bicycle. <laughs> I can't do anything about that now, though. We are flying down that mountain. And that deer is thrashing around behind me, blowing slobber all over my face. And I'm trying to steer in and out of ruts over where logs and around rocks. And just then, just then, we passed a hunting camp. <laughs> I can tell they're real surprised. To see, I got a deer before they did. <laughs> the deer, the bike, and I continue flying down that mountain, and that's when I realized I have made a tragic mistake. I have forgotten to tie the deer's hind hooves down. <laughs> As he's thrashing around back there, he manages to get his hind hooves <laughs> onto the pedals of my bicycle. <laughs> After a while, he catches on to pedaling. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> but then he starts to like it. You've seen how fast a deer can run? You haven't seen anything till you've seen a deer on a bicycle! We hit the bottom of that mountain and I managed to jump off and watch. <laughs> As the deer and my bicycle head off into the horizon. Later, I heard he was involved in a shootout <laughs> with the police while holding up a liquor store in Tacoma, Washington. They said he was using my rifle to do it. That last part 
may just be a story. <laughs> but the rest of it's as close to the God's honest truth as I can get. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks very much. Peace. Thank you so much. Thank you.